Touchdown Tampa Bay, you're listening to the PewterCast. Welcome to the PewterCast. This is our final thought show for the Bucks at the Bears. And boy, oh boy, do we have some final thoughts for you guys. I am Brent Allen, your host, and joining me as always is my co-host, Ren Lip Syncing Daxed. Ren, how you doing, buddy? I am Millie Vanillian. You are. <laughs> I'm good, man. Uh, I had some news right off the top of the show. Uh oh. Yep, yep. Nothing, you know. Uh, um, uh, I, I'm leaving the show. I just want everyone to know. It's a surprise to Brent. No, uh, the flags will be actually going out tomorrow. Nice. I finally figured out a way, or, or really what I did was I, I plucked up the courage to finally go to Cheryl and go, yeah, I'm going to take about half our mortgage payment and oh. spend it on postage for flags. What? Flags? Buccaneer flags? I'm sorry, what did you say? Buccaneer flags? <laughs> no. She was understanding as she always is, which is always really cool. And I know you're appreciative of Penny to be able, you know, to give sure. up a lot of your nights to do this. And Cheryl's never had a problem with it. She's always been uh, cool with it, probably because, you know, she doesn't want to talk to me anymore for the rest of the day, which is fine. You know, I'm like a kid. Like, you know why your bedtime is 9 o'clock? Mm-hmm. Because I'm done with you. Um, so anyway, uh, everything stuff. They're labeled. Uh, the flags are in there. The, the little pamphlets that uh, Brett typed up, I printed them out. They're in there. Uh, the return address labels are on there, so I'm going to be taking them to the post office tomorrow morning before Cheryl goes to work, and uh, and uh, yeah, slap that on the credit card. There you, well, there you go. <laughs> and, so everyone, Edward, why don't you remind everybody how they can contribute to your uh, postage fund if they are one of the few who are going to be, or many, I suppose, actually, who are receiving those? Uh, everybody knows already. Okay. I mean. It's fine. I, I, I think uh, about half it's covered, maybe just a little over, a little less. It's going to be right around. So it's going to be right around half, which is mm-hmm. honestly more than I expected. And there were quite a few people that, that gave like double and triple. Nice, um, nice. You know, because the people in Canada and the people overseas didn't can't do Venmo. Okay. Which I didn't know when I set it up. Uh, you know, and so whatever. It, it's no big deal. It's just basically because I've been getting the reason I'm opening with this because I've been getting a lot of DMs like, hey, buddy, those flags, uh, right. they out yet? You know, hey, um, uh, yo, uh, guy, you got those flags? What, what's going on? And, and like I said, it was just me just having to finally go to the show and go, hey, yeah, I've got to make this happen. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Uh, you know. But the flags or, are going out, though. Yeah. Or I could have just done it and waited, I guess, a month. <laughs> And then, as you know, then the bill comes, then the bill comes. <laughs> What's this? Three hundred fifty dollars charge for the U.S. Postal Service. Uh, I mailed your mom some avocados. Just no, stop there. <laughs> Just you mailed her mom. <laughs> no, three hundred fifty would cover it. Bye-o. Oh, well, with that, <laughs> on today's show, uh, now that we've had some time to cool down from Sunday, which uh, the instant cash show, if you guys haven't heard. It was a good one. Boy, it was a doozy. Uh, we certainly certainly were still feeling all the all the emotions coming off the game. But now that we've had some time to cool down, Ren and I are going to dive back into that discussion that has really been dominating the Buccaneer landscape. And we're going we're gonna to dive back into that whole deal of what do we think about this hashtag fire Mike Smith thing. And where do we go now that uh, – what are we going to do with that given Dirk Cutter's presser on Monday where basically he said no. Uh, and then we're going to wrap up this episode with our final thoughts and grades for the game, which I'm guessing for anyone who watched the game probably right now, before we ever get to it, can go ahead and guess what those grades will be. Ren and I haven't even discussed it yet. I don't know what he's going to grade, but I got a good guess. And then in the second half of this episode, which will be coming out later this week, we're going to get to some emails, questions, comments, and Ren, even our very first voicemail from our fellow fans. All of that and more is coming your way on this episode of The PewterCast. I want to be a billionaire so freaking bad Buy all of the things I never had I want to be on the cover of Forbes magazine 
smiling next to Oprah and the Queen. Yeah, I would have a show like Oprah. Let's so Mike Smith, how about that guy? Yeah, Mike Smith. Well, <laughs> let's talk about him uh, at the Instant Cast. Ren and I got pretty heated. It was a super extra long. James, I don't know if you got to listen to it. Super extra long instant cast. And uh, uh, we called for Mike Smith to be fired. And okay. here we are a couple of uh, a couple of days later. We've cooled mm-hmm. down. We've simmered down. And Ren, I'll put it to you first uh, because I do. Do you still think Mike Smith should be fired? Yeah. Uh I do. And I think the excuse that Cutter gave during his press conference is also garbage. Um, The sample size is big enough, and this is just me sort of rehashing what I said at the end of the cast, maybe in a lower tone. The sample size is big enough. You know, he had one of the worst defenses in 2016 up to week eight, had a miracle turnaround. Last year, 2017, terrible defense, worse in the league. And now we're, now we're, you know, one quarter of the way into the season. Worst defense in the league. Like how, you know, that's what I sort of wanted the reporters to ask Dirk Cutter. He's like, well, you can't fire somebody in the middle of the season. Like, well, how bad does it have to get? Like, Mm -hmm. so it doesn't matter what he does. He's not getting fired. Then why show up? Mm -hmm. Like, why even why even show up to work? If you if if there's no repercussions for how badly do your job, why even show up for work? And then what if Mike Smith, you know, like has to go in has a heart attack and has to go in the hospital for a month do we just not do we not have any defensive game plan <laughs> is that what happens we don't have any depth at the defensive coordinator position yeah it's like it, right. it, 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 they're kind of made us out of the press conference like okay fire mike smith now what uh-huh promote uh someone in your defensive staff to defensive coordinator that's what you do you know he was trying to make it sound you know like we say when people are like okay replace donovan smith well with who right and so basically with who, it's like Mark Duffner. Right. You know, he's been a defensive coordinator for a couple of years in Cincinnati. You know, he's been in the system for four years. It's, it's so and He was pretty successful at, with it, by the way, too. Yeah. And and yeah. so this this song and dance, but, well, well, OK, Mike Smith's fired. Now what? And, and and they just left and they just let him they let him get away with it at mm-hmm. the press conference. And mm-hmm. now we're not going to get to talk to Dirk Cutter for like another, you know, another week, all seven days from from Monday. Uh, the past yeah. Monday, and I was just like, "You got to be kidding me, man!" Mm-hmm. So, yes, to answer your question, I'm still calling <laughs> for Mike Smith to be fired. Yeah, and here's the here's the thing about this, and I'll reiterate this later, uh, I'm sure. Uh, I I think it's a very legit question to say, "Okay, so we fire Mike Smith. Now what?" The thing is, we have an answer. There is mm-hmm. an answer. We have two. We we have one certainly in Duffner. You potentially yeah. have one in Buckner. We just don't know, no. right? No. He probably not, but we just don't know, right? Um, but it's it, Buck or Duffner. Duffner really seems to be the guy. Ren, I, I want to introduce a guy that we've we've referenced a little bit here, but uh, I don't think we've actually introduced him here officially on this show yet. We have joining us Mr. Bucks Nason, James. Big <laughs> buddy. He is here with us. James, how's it going, my friend? Well, it's going pretty good. Um, you know, all things considered, obviously, you guys said take a couple of days to cool down from that horrific game that we had against the Chicago Bears. I was traveling that day, so I didn't have to watch most of it. So, you know, that was that was pretty a pretty nice thing to see, but I'm doing pretty good. Uh, happy to be here. Thank you guys for having me on. Yeah, man. Seriously. And and listen, I really wanted to bring you on. You had a really good video uh, that came out. I'm not sure when it actually got published. I just got to see it a little bit earlier today uh, that was asking the, this same question. Should the Buccaneers fire Mike Smith? And I thought you had uh, some incredible insight. I thought you, you, you researched it. You actually brought some, some real stats and listen, there's a lot of other outlets out there that are talking about all the stats. I'm not going to go into them all. Actually, James, that's why you're here. I'm going to let you do that. But you know, whether it's, it's Peter report, or, it's right. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's whether it's Peter report or James Allman or Jenna Lane or, uh, you know, James or, uh, any of these other sites out there, I just, people have got these things. So, uh, James, you're kind of our guy to, to come in. And plus we like having friends on the show. So, um, I'll put it to you. Uh, let us know. What do you think? Should the Buccaneers fire Mike Smith? So 
obviously um from just an immediate you know immediate jerk knee-jerk reaction it's like everybody's saying yes you know it's mm-hmm. like oh you know these past four games the bucks defense hasn't been good they've been giving up all these points you know 21 points to the philadelphia eagles 30 points to the pittsburgh Steelers, 40 points to the new orleans saints and then 48 points to the chicago bears so a lot of people are looking at it in terms of you know some people are looking at it in terms of just this season okay fire him just for this year but it goes so much more deeper than that yes and when you look at it not just from this year but the year before this year and the year before that year statistically speaking yes you you should fire mike smith um just taking a deeper look into the statistical, the statistical categories and all the ones that matter it's not good <laughs> it's not good and i'm sure we'll delve into it deeper but the short answer is yes, they should fire Mike Smith um, because of just since he's gotten here in 2016, his defense hasn't worked. It just hasn't mm-hmm. worked. Um, it's worked in some ways, maybe once or twice, and in some statistical categories it has worked, but overall it just doesn't work. Um, so, yeah, short answer, yes, I do believe they should fire Mike Smith, absolutely. Yeah, it- and I'm with you guys. I'm I'm 100 percent there, and uh, I think they should fire him this week. I actually got into a very tiny conversation with Jenna Lane earlier today about that as well, and um, you know she had kind of pointed out she's like, listen, the Buccaneers had the perfect whether they fire him this week or not doesn't matter. They had the perfect opportunity to do something about it this past off season, and they chose not to. And the only change they made was the defensive line, and they didn't do anything else to the defensive side of the ball, which so clearly was an issue last year. Um, and I, I got to admit, I, I think I said a few of that, I said that same thing a few times over this past off season of going, wow, they really only changed one one guy. That's that's. Mm. I don't know about that. And, you know, I've said this whole season so far, I don't trust this defense. I don't. And now they kind of started lulling me into they shut out the Steelers. I was like, okay, maybe we might see something. But at the end of this, and and I'm with you guys, uh, Dirk Cutter said, listen, this is one of 16 games. This is one of 16 games. He was talking to the team. And that might be true for this particular team. That might be true for this particular set of guys. This is not true for Mike Smith. In fact, this is 20 games out of 36. We've had it, and even more than that, when you consider some of the other statistics, it's a lot more than 20 out of his 36. Uh, It's 20 out of 36. It's 20 out of 36 uh, of of losses. The the record is he's 16 for 20, and and, and fair enough, Cutter is too, right? Yeah. Okay. But uh, I thought you were saying like giving up like forty points or or it, well uh, well okay so giving up uh, four hundred yards I think it was Greg Allman who said that this was nineteen of thirty six games yeah. um, and then later giving up three hundred there's another fifteen games on top of that where they gave up over three hundred yards and uh, you know so even if you combine those two and then you take the those numbers. Uh, it, so what? What is that? That's 31. 34, 31? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, uh, thirty-one. <laughs> so you know, it, sixteen it, and fifteen is thirty-one. Cool. Okay, there you go. So it's not good. It, it, the The numbers aren't good. And here's the thing. And, and I don't know about you guys. And and I'll 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 couch it in sort of my thinking, and I'll see what you guys think. I can understand why Mike Smith is here up to right now. Like, like I, I kind of get it. Uh, first year, we had a very bad first half, went into the bye. They fixed it. They came out, and, and they had that five-game winning streak, and I think they might have won even one more after that, mostly on the back of the defense. So, yay. And then we re-signed Mike Smith for two years. Best offseason free agent non-player signing ever. And then the defense second year completely fell on the face the entire season. But you could kind of blame the guys, right? I mean, well, they you could, did. It, right. Well, we did too, Ren. Uh, well, you know, we did because they did. Sure. And you could say bad guys in the locker room between TJ Ward and, and Baker. Will Golston regressed. Vernon had a really rough start, although he did kind of come along. Robert Ayers was getting old. So was it Mike Smith? Maybe not. Dirk got another chance. Let's see what let's see what Mike Smith can do with the new guys. You know, maybe the players just didn't execute. That's kind of what we were saying going into this year. Right. 
Right. We've restocked the cupboard, injury proof the defensive line, same rock star linebackers, the stack the D backs with high round rookies, uh, brought back our best corner, plus VH3 is making a resurgence. Four games into it, though, I see why we've brought I see why we brought him back up to this point. I do not understand why Mike Smith would be the defensive coordinator going forward. It isn't the horses. It, it has nothing to do with the players. It's not injuries. Everybody's dealing with injuries. It's not rookies. Everybody has rookies. This isn't poor execution at this point. There's something larger. And I don't, I don't see a reason for Mike Smith to go forward. Okay. That's a question. <laughs> That's my diet. No, it's not a question. That's my <laughs> thinking. That's my line of I thinking. Thought, Does that ring thought, true to you guys? You I don't know. I heard you were going like, to table it and see what we thought. And then there it is. That didn't happen. That's... <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, does that like, I mean, no, the question was, being no, I, of I, why I Mike Smith is here till right now, does that make sense? Right. Is that solid oh, yeah, thinking? Yeah. I okay. mean, you know, you could have made an argument the first half of two years ago. And then like we've, we've said many times resurgence and you could have made an argument during this off season, but they said, look, man, we just didn't have the players that we thought we had. Mm-hmm. You know, the guys we brought in aren't the guys that we thought we brought in. And it just and we're going to make this huge movement to get tougher up the middle offense on the offense side of the ball on the defense side of the ball. This is going to be a whole new movement. And they come out and they shit the bed. They have shit the bed every single week. Mm-hmm. They have, you know, just because you beat the Saints 48 to 40 doesn't mean you played good defensive football. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. like they let the Eagles get back into it. Uh and then, you know, the Steelers game, which wasn't necessarily their fault because one of those touchdowns was scored by the Pittsburgh's defense, but one of those turnovers was inside the five-yard line, and mm-hmm. the Steelers went all the way down the field and scored. And then don't forget that the Steelers went all the way down the field and scored right before halftime in less than two minutes. So it's, you know, if you, what you're hanging your hat on in these first four games, they shut the Steelers out on Monday night, the second half a team that's only won one game that mm-hmm. was against you. That's enough. That's nothing to hang your hat on. Right. Like it, it's just not, it's I'm with you. I, I, you can make excuses till now. This was, like I said before, you know, the game itself, Chicago game, this is a litmus test. This is it. If they, if the defense comes out and craps the bed here, then something has to change, you know? And what made it worse is that we lost, mm-hmm. you know, you, you know, you can kind of forgive a win. Like if we won 33 to 31, we'd be happy and be like, man, this defense really needs to come around. Mm-hmm. But when you give up six passing TDs to Mitch Trubisky, five in the first half where they only had to punt one time, they only had to, between the Pittsburgh game and Chicago game, four punts total. Mm-hmm. You know how many three and outs they had? Two. And they were both in the first – and they were both like in the first quarter. Maybe even the first – no, not the first session because it was the second session in Chicago. Like it's not good, and I've always liked Dirk Cutter because he'll tell you the truth. You ask him a question, he'll tell you the truth if he's willing to answer it. And he answered it, and his answer is – I just it's terrible. It's a terrible answer. It's a yep. bullcrap answer. It's a cop-out answer, and I, I think he knows it. Like I hope he comes on. I hope he does his coach show this Friday. Yeah, where he, where he comes on the local radio station because I'm calling and I'm going to <laughs> ask him that I'm not sure what I'm going to ask him. You know, like you know, do you do you think I'm a toilet because of the, why are you peeing in me or peeing on me? Like, <laughs> I, I don't. I have. I don't know. But I'm gonna I, I'm gonna throw him a hard question. I hope he yeah. comes on. And the next time he comes on, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw him the hard question because he'll be at least on bef- the Friday before the Falcons game. Hopefully. Sure. Anyway, the point being and the reason james is here is we can sit here and rant and rave and talk about this and that and that but james did a deep dive in the statistics Mm -hmm. and i would like to hear what he found sort of to back up you know because right now we're just rambling you know i'm rambling louder more than everybody else (laughs) but i but but for the people that are like well yeah but you know and i haven't have been convinced to you know, it's like, well, what do you guys know? You never coach football. I think Dirk Cutter knows better, or the organization knows better, or Mike Smith knows defense better than 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 you know you do. Rent well, yeah, but it's also not my job, and I'm not getting paid a lot of money to do it either. So, if you will, James, can you tell us some of these some of the findings that you found uh, when you went all when you you started? I'm, I'm assuming you went back all the way to when Mike Smith first got here. 
Right. I went all the way back to 2016, Mike Smith, Mike Smith's first year as the defensive coordinator. Um, that was the first year Dirk Cutter got promoted as head mm-hmm. coach. They went nine and seven that year. They went on that five game winning streak, like what you guys alluded to earlier. And during that five game winning streak, they had only two out of those five games where they gave up 300 or more yards in those five games. So you can, you know, that was a very good stretch. That was a very good stretch for Mike Smith's defense. Um, but taking a look at that, we're going to start with 2016, taking a look at 2016 first, in terms of rushing yards per game, the Buccaneers defense ranked 22nd in the league. Now, when I was analyzing these stats, what I considered average, and I was being generous, I considered fifth, ranked 15 all the way down to 19 as average. You know, anything below that, that's bottom half in the league, in my opinion. Um so in terms of rushing yards per game, they ranked 22nd. In terms of passing yards per game, they, again, ranked 22nd. In points per game, they ranked 15th. And in total yards per game, they ranked 23rd. So it's it's either average or below average in all of the yards categories. And even in the points categories, it's average at best. Um, but all in all, you know, as a first year, you could say, okay, we can have some improvement. We'll build off this next year in the system. You know, mm-hmm. so it's not fireable those th- those stats. No, You'd like absolutely. to have it better, but you know you can live with it, especially yeah, if you're winning. yeah, absolutely. And then even there was there was even some positives in third down completion percentage. The Buccaneers were number one, so teams mm-hmm. were not completing third downs going up against Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They were the best at stopping opponents on third down for sacks. I remember that? Ranked, yeah, right, and yeah, on yeah, sacks. Yeah. On sacks, they were ranked tenth. Hmm. That's pretty. That's pretty good. Mm-hmm. In forced punts, they were ranked twenty first. In penalties, they were ranked twenty eighth. That's penalties are ranked twenty eighth. That's that's to me is kind of a disciplinary issue. But in takeaways, they were ranked third that year. They were right. ranked wow. third yeah. in takeaways. Yeah, and that's how they won those that five game win streak. Like, yeah. so let's face it. They right. Were, they were they were forcing they a ton of takeaways, but this exactly. this they weren't really stopping people. They were getting really timely takeaways. Right. And this to me is this is the peak type of Mike Smith defense that we've heard of since he came to the Bucks. The defense that we had heard was the bend but don't break defense. You know, we're going to give up a ton of yards, but hey, at least we'll stop them. They won't be scoring touchdowns. They won't be scoring a ton of points, you know, but mm-hmm. we'll give up a ton of yards. And it, it, it kind of I'm using quotations there. It kind of worked in a way. You know, they were average at points per game. Um, and then you get to 2017 and things get a lot worse, a lot, a lot worse in rushing yards per game, it, a slight regression, 23rd. OK, that's okay. bad. That's bad. That's still below average passing yards per game. 32nd worst in the league. This was the year they went five and 11 second year in Mike Smith's system. This is when a lot of you know, this was where a lot of people were calling for it, you know, calling for him to get fired initially points per game. They were ranked 24th in the league, another below average. Total yards per game, 32nd. Third down completion percentage, they were last in the league. Penalties, they were 21st. Sacks, 32nd. Forced punts, 32nd. And still, in and takeaways, they ranked 8th that year. So takeaways really? just – Really? Yeah, take, takeaways didn't even matter. Hmm. They, didn't, they didn't matter, apparently, because – Looking at all these yard statistics, they were one of the worst defenses. So, in the- so they went from second and third down completion percentage to last. They went from number one in third down completion percentage one. to last. To last. Right. They went from 10th in sacks to last. Like I was saying, in 2016, they went from first and third down completion percentage all the way to last in 2017 in third down completion percentage. It was They went from number one all the way to dead last in one year. <laughs> in one year and with with supposedly improved players they spent right. draft and, picks there they brought in you know free agents and kind it's funny you say that because that, yeah. i i even took the liberty of seeing who started the majority of games between the 2016 and the 2017 season and there was only four differences Bradley McDougal was replaced by Justin Evans. Vernon right. Hargraves was replaced by Ryan Smith because Vernon Hargraves had sustained an in, a injury. Daryl Smith was replaced by Kendall Beckwith. And Clinton McDonald was replaced by Chris Baker. 
So Robert Ayers, Will Golston, Gerald McCoy, Quan Alexander, Levante David, Chris Conti, and Brent Grimes, they all remain the starters. And Mm -hmm. they're all players who have had individual accolades in their own rights. You know, they're they're all players who have shown to do very good things in an individual basis. You know, most of them have made a Pro Bowl before and, you know, have had other accolades here and there. So there wasn't much turnover from one year to the next and it was still that much of a regression in terms of the overall defense. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, and I, I remember that because, you know, when Chris Baker got signed, everybody thought it was like the best thing that could have happened for the bucks. Uh, All the media guys did the fans did. We did here at the pewter cast. Uh, The, the, the national speaking pundits thought it was great. And then TJ Ward gets signed there at the late train in late in training camp. And Oh my God, this just sealed our, our secondary. This team is is going to be unstoppable, but you know, bigger up the middle. Like this is great, and we scratched our heads for sixteen games, going, "What the f- is going on?" Okay, not sixteen, fifteen. Because let's be honest, that first game against the Chicago Bears after the hurricane was awesome. Right, nothing after that. Right. So, you know, it's not a situation of oh well. Because I know a lot of people will say, oh, well, the players just didn't know the system and whatnot. You know, it's like, oh, they need time to learn the system. Majority, over 50 percent of the starters were still there from one year to the next. Mm -hmm. That shouldn't be that much of a difference. And yet it just had a horrible regression. And then looking right now into 2018, still painting a not very good picture. Some things are better um, in terms of rushing yards per game. The Buccaneers are sixth overall. They have the sixth overall best rushing defense so far. I have been, I've been pleasantly surprised by that because I've gone back and watched the games. It feels like it's a lot worse but then you go back and watch it and there's lots of like negative runs, tackle for losses, lot, runs that are for like three yards or less that are in there that you sort of forget about. Uh, you know, they bottled up Howard and, I know Treat Cohen's final numbers don't show it, but when he stayed between the tackles, it, he did, did a good job. The problem was, hey, what a shock. Quan Alexander was in his run gap, and he bounced it outside, and no one's there. Right. The And the big problem with 2018 so far still continues to be the passing offense. In passing yeah. yards per game, the Buccaneers, 32nd. Points per game, 32nd. Total yards per game, 31st. The only team that they're ahead of at this point is the Kansas City Chiefs. Again, there are still some positives in third down completion percentage. They rank 14th, so average at best. In penalties, they're 25th. In sacks, they're 26th. And in forced punts, they're 26th as well. And in takeaways, they still showed regression in that category as well. They're now down to 17th. You know what's funny about that is you just said that we're 26th in sacks this year, right? Right. Here I've been sitting here looking at all the sacks that we've gotten so far in four games. And been like, you know, because I'm comparing it to last year, right? I'm like, man, look at all these sacks we're getting. Like, JPP is up there. And, you know, man, look at all these guys getting these sacks in these four games. You're telling me we're 26th in the league in sacks. Right. And again, I checked. Wow. And again, I, I checked the numbers. And uh-huh. I decided to see what starters changed from last year to this year. You know, this, who started the majority of games so far in 2018. And I cross-referenced the numbers from ESPN.com with profootballreference.com. And here's what changed. Um, Kendall Beckwith hasn't played, so Darius Taylor's been the majority starting linebacker opposite Quan Alexander, Levante David. Carlton Davis has replaced Ryan Smith so far as the cornerback who started the most games opposite Brent Grimes so far. Vinnie Curry replaced Robert Ayers. Jason Pierre-Paul replaced Will Golston. And because Will Golston was slid into defensive tackle due to the injuries of Bo Allen and Vita Vea. Everything else stayed the same again. Gerald McCoy, Quan Alexander, Levante David, Justin Evans, Chris Conti. That's all stayed the same. <laughs> and I know, I know that, you know, a couple of these guys are hurt. Like Chris Conti was hurt and there's a couple of injuries here and there. But... Again, it's a it's another situation of, you know, oh, well, you know, the players aren't executing. Well, the guys have been here for two and a fourth years now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's been the supposed it's been the leaders of your defense. Mm-hmm. We all know that Levante Davis is a good linebacker. We all know that Gerald McCoy is a good defensive tackle. Um, I think most people can in, believe that Quan Alexander is a young, good up and coming middle linebacker. Now, you know, the jury's still out on Brent Grimes right now. But the the point is that, you know, 
the Bucks have been trying to give Mike Smith the players that he needs. They've been trying in a couple of key positions the past couple of years, and Mike Smith just it doesn't work. Nothing yeah. you give Mike Smith works. Yeah, and, <laughs> and that's, it seems like. Sorry, it seems like he's, you know, uh, they went and got him some players he wanted, you know, last year. They went and got some players he wanted this year. And it's gotten worse from the first year he got here when he didn't have the players. He didn't have his players. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's and that's why for me, uh, the excuses of uh, the horses, the injuries and the rookies, those those three things don't fly with me anymore. Um, every, every defensive coordinator is dealing with injuries and they're dealing with rookies and they're dealing with, with having to shuffle people around. That's not, that's not unique to Mike Smith. Uh, and you can't tell me it's the horses because the guys that we have generally have been pretty good and, and just, it's not an excuse anymore Two two and a quarter seasons in there's, I, I just have no more excuses for him. So, right. There, um, there's one more statistic I want to talk with you guys about, and this, this one is the most disappointing. Um, so like what you said, um, earlier, Brent is Greg Almond tweeted out something about Mike Smith's 36 games and how the one statistic he tweeted out was in terms of 400 plus yards given up in a game, the Buccaneers have done that 19 times in 36 games. That's mm-hmm. 53% of the time. It's more than half the games Mike Smith has had as a defensive coordinator. Mm -hmm. So I decided to go a little bit deeper. And I said, well, what about 300 plus yards? Because that's, that's still a lot. You know, you can still lose a lot of games giving up 300 plus yards. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Before you do that, the, in those 19 games where they gave up 400 yards, the record is four and 15. Right. Like, so it's, it's not even, you can say there's, because because our our friend Derek over at what the Bucks says says this, and I'm I'm in, I'm partially in agreement with this. I don't care how many yards you give up. I don't care how many points the other team scores. As long as we score more, as long as we win, I'm okay. Like let them run it up. I don't care as long as we win. I get that, but in this situation, the record's four and fifteen. We're not winning right. when the other team score over four hundred yards. Sorry, I just wanted to put that out there. Go ahead. Sorry. So. For 300 plus yards, you know, given up in a game, and you can still lose a lot of games like that, 28 out of 36 games, 78% of the games that Mike Smith has had as a, the Buccaneers defensive coordinator, he's been up 300 plus yards, 78% of those games. And then we looked at the statistic of that Greg Amon pointed out 30 plus points given up in 36 games was 13 out of 36, 36%. So I said, okay. Well, let's drop down that number to 24 plus points a game. That's still giving up a lot of points per game, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's 20 That's twenty out of 36 games, 56% more than half. So this, this Ben... So why, so why isn't he fired? I mean, this is like, I think we're all in agreement here, yeah. but let's, let's kind of turn the page and, and like, why? Like, why is he not fired? Like, give me... Okay, let's try it this way. Give me a reason why Mike Smith should stay. Like, give me an excuse. If I could, the only, the only excuse that I could possibly, possibly come to a conclusion of is you could blame the secondary coaches because the one, the one common theme that has been present since 2016 is the Buccaneers have had either below average or worst in the league passing defense that's that's it you know Mm -hmm. they've been the worst at passing defense two years of 2017 and 2018 they've they've been the worst passing defense so far so if i was dirt cutter or you know and i wanted to save mike smith or whatever i would probably point the finger to the secondary coaches we talked about earlier about how well jay hayes was fired well you know, now now we may be looking at a situation where Mike Smith again gets saved and they might fire the secondary coaches. That's the only that's the only plausible situation I could see that would be an excuse to to keep Mike Smith mm-hmm. around. Me personally, there's no excuse, but Yeah, I, I got something. Um and trying to get into Dirt Cutter's Venus mind is because in the third moon. What? Venus is in the third moon? No. 
Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I just understood what you just said there. Movie. Everybody knows that. Yeah. Um, and I think this is a, I think this is a, a bad excuse. I don't agree with this excuse. And philosophically, I, I disagree with this. However, trying to think of why Dirk Cutter may not have fired him yet um, is. He owes him money. No. Because, uh, let, okay, let me tell you what I don't think it is. I don't think it's because they're friends. I don't think it's because um, it's about relationships. Dirk Cutter came out and he very clearly said, this is not about relationships. This is a business. And the way he said that, I believe him. Like I really do. Like I, I, I thought he was going to fire him Monday. I thought he was when he, too. When he came out and he goes, I don't like to make you know announcements at the beginning, but I'm going to go ahead and do that today. I'm like, oh god, yeah, here it comes. yeah I did yeah. too. Here it comes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, you know, he he asked the question, and Ren, you referenced this earlier. So we get rid of Mike Smith. Then what? The answer for us would be you promote Duffner. You promote. Maybe one of the other guys. I'm going to say Duff. Go get a Twinkie. Who gives a shit? Just right. fire the guy. Exactly. But his, you know, and I think his thinking is that, uh, you know, can Duffner do it better than Mike Smith? Or is whoever they would put in there, would they do it better than Mike Smith? Who has the, it's that, it's that who has the best chance of well, winning? Well, according to James uh, and his statistics, you can't do it worse. No, it's, <laughs> no, you, it's, you can't. You don't have a lot to lose at this. Well, point. it's it's well because you're right. It's either so. Who has the best opportunity to make it go better? And it sounds at least as of Monday, because I do want to point this out. Remember, they picked up Jay Hayes's contract. It yeah. picked up the option, and then forty days later, they fired him. I'm yeah. not saying it's going to be forty days, but what if it's four days? They they came out on Monday and said, mm, "We're going to stay here." But he and Jason and the Glazers and whoever have those conversations, they do the 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 introspection and the dissection or whatever they call it. it the, it's still point. conceivable Mike Smith could be gone here by the end of the week because That's the players aren't going to be here till next week. Like, yeah, it's possible. Like- I don't think it's going to happen. Let me go let me be clear. I don't think that's what's going to happen. I think Mike Smith will stay at this point, but. I'm not ready to just say hands down Mike Smith is absolutely staying because that's what Dirk Cutter said because I don't think that's necessarily the case either. That's a what? good point because they don't like to make – shush, James. They don't like to make rash decisions. <laughs> <laughs> James, would you like to come back on our show anytime soon? <laughs> I'll, just, be nice. I'll, just, I'll just hang out. You guys <laughs> 57th Lord Beastmaster. Um <laughs> That's a good point because they don't like to make brash decisions. Jason, like we saw it on Hard Knocks mm-hmm. last year, where they almost f- like cut Bobo Wilson because he went to Miami. Right, remember that? Yeah. So now in this introspective thing, where maybe it's another situation because I believe that uh, Jason Light had to actually talk Mike Smith into, uh, f- oh, excuse me, talk to Cutter into, into into firing Jay Hayes, and now you know we might have this meeting where it's like. You know, Mike Smith, hey, my fire, not yet, but, you know, we haven't done our, our internal evaluation yet. Right. So, you know, so, you know, you might be right, but I would like to bring something up that I have just remembered that I said way back in the off season. Okay. That would have fixed this whole situation that we're looking at now. Remember when we were discussing possible ways to sort of have a backup plan this year? Mm hmm because of Mike Smith's defense we were so worried about. Do you remember me saying bringing in Jack Del Rio's defensive consultant? Vaguely. Yeah, I mean, because this would have been way early in the offseason, right? It was. And I was just like, and you're like, well, what's he going to do? And I was like, I don't care what he does. Make up up a title. Like, I don't, you know, all I really want him in there to do is learn this defense and learn the terminology and, and get to know the players and get to know the other coaches. So when this thing blows up in our face which in the first four weeks it has and you can make that decision at the bye week hey mike smith you're done who's the defensive coordinator it's it's my old good friend jack del rio Mm -hmm. who they both coached under at jacksonville who was you know the only other time jacksonville was good he was the head coach who took the raiders to the playoffs and might have won the super bowl if Derek Carr didn't break his leg on the last game or the last game of the year uh, two years ago, and then just got booted for what? Re- bringing the Ra- Raiders back from, from nothing. Like, mm-hmm. so. 
anyway, I just remember that, and I, I wanted to bring that up about, you know, because it happens a lot. Like, right. I'm almost embarrassed how much it happens that if they would just listen to what I say blindly, <laughs> that everything would, would work out. They just got to listen to the pewter cast, man. That's all they got to do. That's, I, Take notes. You know, Take notes while I they're can, listening. These are the things that I bring up when, you know, Cheryl tells me I'm wrong about something. I'm like, oh, yeah. Jack Del Rio, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, James. Well, man, we we were kind of here at the end of our time, so um, you know, as we kind of round this corner, uh, I think we're all in agreement. Honestly, I think the vast majority of Buccaneers Nation is in agreement. The media is in agreement. I gotta, I gotta imagine at least some people in that building are probably in agreement. At this point, Mike Smith needs to be fired. Um, what do you got for us as we kind of round the corner on this? Well, a couple of the two things. The, the first one is, is um, back whenever Lovey Smith was fired, mm-hmm. um, nobody saw that coming. And even Lovey Smith didn't even see it coming. He thought he was going to stay. Mm-hmm. And the Glaziers kind of overruled the decision, I believe, was the around the consequences of what had happened. And they ended up getting rid of him. We might see a similar situation, possibly. I don't know. Um but one thing I will say about Dirk Cutter so far is when he sees something that is a problem, he will correct it, but he won't exactly be the happiest in press conferences when he is asked about it. Like play calling. He gave up play calling. He didn't have to do that, but he did. He gave up play calling to Todd Munkin because he knew it was the right move. People asked him about it and he got all defensive and very upset about it. Now the main problem is the defense People asked him about it, and he got all defensive about it and came out and tried to deflect it. Um, I don't know. Hopefully, behind closed doors, Dirk Cutter's gears are turning, and maybe something's going on. Um, Mike Smith really should be fired, though. <laughs> like, all, yeah. things, all things considered, it's just not good. Um, it's just really bad. So I don't know if something will happen. We have about a week and a half to decide now or not us, but the yeah. Bucks have a week, <laughs> not <What>? us, but <laughs> I, um, I've made my decision. My vote. <laughs> the, the Bucks have a week and a half now to decide. I can guarantee you that the Glaziers and Jason light, cause those are, those are the guys who, you know, they're the, they're the guys who are going to be making this decision at the end of the day. You know, they're talking about it. They have to be, Yeah. you know, yeah. cause if, cause if, if we can easily look up the, the statistics and all the numbers and whatnot, the Glaziers have been paying attention to the statistics just as much. Mm-hmm. And they'll talk with Jason Light about that and it'll, you know, it'll break down whoever it decides to be broken down. <laughs> I just can't see the, like, so the Glaziers walk into Jason Light's office with the stats and plop on his desk and they go, and this is kind of like what I just with you guys, they go, convince me otherwise. Like, what's Jason Light going to say? He's a really nice guy? Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's, I, I can't think of anything like in, like there's nothing like, well, a lot of rookies. OK, other teams play rookies, a lot of injuries, other teams like poor. And but, you know, I guess this could be in his defense because, you know, Atlanta's going to have to outscore people like 40, 40. They have to, Atlanta's got to put up 45 points. So they got no chance. I mean, you know, they've lost both their safeties and one of their linebackers and, and they're all really good. So uh, once again, bent the over uh, next Sunday. Um a little tip for you but yeah i mean what's like what's the defense like that's gonna make like make the glazers and that's why dirt cutter didn't get fired let's face it because mm-hmm. the glazers came out and said at the owners meeting well we're not happy with the record but if you can sit me down and give me the reason why it happened and basically i believe it okay let's right. continue going forward the way we are okay serious and unfortunate events let's say but right. wh- like where's like what's he gonna say Right now that that brings up kind of my final piece on this whole Mike Smith thing. And then uh, we're going to move on. Um, If if I'm Dirk Cutter, I'm looking at this situation and I'm realizing that there to fire Mike Smith is a win win situation right now. And to keep him, I think, is actually a lose lose situation. Because here's the thing. If you're the Glazers, you know that they want the team to win and we want them to win this season. But more than that, to what you just said, Ren, they're looking to see if Dirk Cutter is the man who can make changes, establish excellence, hold people accountable, do what it takes to make this team shine. Is he the right guy for Dirk Cutter? 
if he fires Mike Smith and let's say Duffner becomes the interim because that probably is the most likely scenario and the defense continues to struggle, Dirk Cutter has an out, right? I mean, you, you can lay down, just take James's sheet here. Here's why we fired Mike Smith. We changed defensive coordinators in the middle of the year. Defense continued to struggle. We'll fix it this off season. There's an out. It's a built-in excuse for it to be out, and the Glazers could understand that. If they wait till the end of the year, um, well, they'll get to the end of the year. He'll he'll be able to explain. I think um, I think Dirk Cutter has a good case for why Mike Smith was brought back this year, but he has an even better case for why he would have let him go. If, on the other hand, um, they get rid of Mike Smith, Duffner becomes the interim uh, coach, and the Buccaneers start winning, and the defense, or not even the start winning, just the defense starts showing up. Then guess what? Dirk Cutter looks like a guy with balls who's a genius who's going to do what the uh, who's going to do what it takes to get this team team going. That's a win win to me. A lose lose. I think the Gla- the Glazers understand this. We have to certainly understand this. Um, you know, if if he keeps Mike Smith and the defense continues to suck, then why didn't Dirk Cutter do something about it? That's a lose situation. I'm at a spot now where honestly, and this may be the the. The crazy talk that I give you tonight, Ren. Um, no, if Mike Smith you're stays, you're you're if ready. Mike Smith stays, and the def- let's say the defense comes out next week in Atlanta, and they've they did what they did in 2016. They go into the bye, they fix things, and all of a sudden the defense shines, and they have this great rest of the season. Mm-hmm. I don't think that that's enough to save Mike's job, Mike Smith's job, or that it should be enough to save Mike Smith's job at this point. Because we have 36 other games that we can point back to and say that it's not trustworthy. I'm not going to trust them. They can go out and have this. I'm still not going to trust them that it's not going to revert back next year, that it's not going to have a, a, a similar effect. Is that crazy? What do you guys think? Is it a win-win, lose-lose, or am I smoking something over here? James? Ask our, ask our smoky friend. <laughs> um. Well, yeah, I, I pretty much completely agree with everything you say. Another thing that you have to factor in is, uh, well, hey, that's hey. two of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so the the big thing for me is is now it's getting to the point where Mike Smith's defense is getting so bad that the players might start losing confidence yeah. and the ability to trust Mike Smith's defense. That's yeah. a really big deal because if the players lose confidence, your season's going to suck. <laughs> You know, it's yeah. it's not going to go well. That's that's the next big thing I'm worried about if Dirk Cutter decides to keep Mike Smith and whatnot. Um, like what you said is, oh, well, you know, what if what happens if they keep Mike Smith and he still continues to do really good? Well, that would just be a similar situation to what happened in 2016 when they went on that five game winning streak. The defense looked good in that five game winning streak. And then, oh, look what happened the next season. They're worse in the league in most categories. So. There's not a whole lot of good reason to to keep Mike Smith, and I, I understand that. Like, yeah, uh, you know, Dirk Cutter, he can maybe be stubborn, and you know, oh well, what's next? But you know, it's not a good situation he's in right mm-hmm. now, you know, at all. So it's it's not good. It's not good at all. The only way I would agree with you, Brent, or actually, I don't agree with you at all. Okay. But the only way that I would would be the reasons why that Mike Smith defense turned the corner because they're going to tell you reasons why because they're going to get asked a hundred times what what the big re- resurgence like okay. you know why all of a sudden the defense playing better if I like the answers and can buy it like I've bought all these other excuses up till this point where now like it's a fed up if they can tell me a reason why the defense turned this corner and went on and I'm talking like we got to go to the playoffs. Okay. You know, I'm not talking like going eight and eight and we win a bunch of games, 40 to eight, 40, you know, 40 to 48 or 48 to 40. Like that doesn't count. Like I'm talking, you know, we go like 10 and six, 11 and five, we go to the playoffs. Then I will listen to you, but you got to, I have to like the reasons why the defense turned around, but the point, but the problem is, I don't understand. I can't think of anything that he can do that's going to turn around the defense mm-hmm. because it's so. Cl- we just had training camp. 
Yeah. Both these guys have been in the been in this for three. This is their third year. This is a question I asked when I got in trouble at the Peter Report Bowling Tournament. Right. You know, I look at Chris Conti. You know, it was you know, it was the first what was it? it was the first day they were back, and Quan gets up there and starts talking about we're just making sure we're all on the same page, communication. And then another defensive player, I think Gerald McCoy, got up there and said the same thing. And then a couple of days later, I'm at the bowling tournament in front of me is Chris Conte, Darius Taylor, and and uh. Uh, Alan Cross and I'm like I'm like explain to me how you guys don't have this defense down yet. This is going to be your third year in it. Like, is he is is it in Sanskrit? Like, what's going on? <laughs> and everyone sort of looked at me, you know, like huh, like you know, like hey, this is a charity event. What are you asking this question for? But they were really interested in the answer, and he gave me sort of this. Well, it's really complicated, a lot of moving parts, and I didn't let it go with that. I'm like, okay, well then, whose fault is it? Like, where's the breakdown? Is it my kid's <laughs> fault? <laughs> this is James. What? James, yeah. paint this, paint yeah. this picture. This is in a bowling yeah. alley, James. This is in a bowling alley <laughs> at a charity what? fan what event. The heck, man, that was so. I'm like, so I'm like, well, whose fault is it then? <laughs> Mike Smith's fault? Is it Quan's fault because he's not he's not relaying what Mike Smith's saying? Is it a breakdown in the in the secondary? Like where's the breakdown? Okay, just give me a percentage. Which part is breaking down the most? Who's miscommunicating the most? And he's like, well, you know, it's really complicated defense. And then they wouldn't call me for any more questions. <laughs> Why I wouldn't would either. You do just that? So you know. Because I wanted to know. <laughs> At a bowling tournament for a charity event? I paid my money. <laughs> Gave you charity. I bought raffle tickets. I put them in the stupid cups for the stupid pictures. The other, the other thing I gave it was you, a Q&A. It was it was a Q and A where, as I understand it, nobody else was asking questions, and Ren's like, "Yeah, all right, that, I got a question." Yeah. yeah, and I knew my question was not going to be a softball question, so it's like TJ Reeves is actually hosting it, and he's like, he's like, "Anybody have any questions?" There's about probably thirty, maybe forty of us in this room because we we go away from the bowling alley and the birthday, the party room. To uh, you know, so people can hear, and you know, and no one asked, any, no one's asking anything, and he asked, he asked, uh, Travis, you know, uh, Gator Travis, yeah, uh, fan of the uh, year, guy. fan of the year, Travis, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, and Travis was like, nope, I'm good. So I look around a little more, so I'm like, okay, well, here it comes. <laughs> here's, no one's at. Here's my question. It's a slider. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, and and lo and behold, here we are, like three months later. And it's the same freaking crap. Yeah. You know, it's it's exactly what I asked, and no one's on the same page. Half the team's playing zone, the other half's playing man. Like that's coaching. Even I mean, that's just that's just coaching. If you can't your can't get your guys to play the at least the zone, like get them all to play zone at the same time, that's like yeah. I don't uh, I don't know. I mean, that's just it's almost unforgivable. Like you know, he's my he's my coach. He's he's my defensive coordinator. Play for the Bucks, but come on, man! Mm-hmm. Like they can't be that freaking stupid. They can't be. Yeah, so, something that was has been pointed out a couple of times, and Corey Draper of the pre, of the play reaction pointed this out to me. He said, "You know what's really interesting is is how many times the opposing team's coaches have said, oh, yeah, we knew what coverages they were going to run.' Yeah." yeah. And we know we knew exactly they did exactly what we thought they were going to do. And yeah. we know how to beat that. It's not yep, hard. No it's- surprises. Nope. They didn't. Nope. And they didn't. And oddly enough, you know what? They didn't make any adjustments. Yeah. Like Matt Nagy. Oh, he ran cover three a lot of the time. That's oh, OK. That's easy to beat. All right. Let's do this. You know, and it's mm-hmm. just situations like that that make you go, well, what are you doing, Mike Smith? You know, yep. that's what that's one of the biggest knocks on him is that he doesn't make adjustments yep. <laughs> at all. Um, and. It's just it just keeps on going and going and going. And it's been Well, gentlemen, I think we, along with everybody, everyone else who has a podcast, a YouTube channel, a a website, whatever, we have beat this into the ground. Uh, You know, hopefully, hopefully we are applying enough pressure to the Buccaneers that change will be made. I don't know how much of an effect this actually has on what the Buccaneers do. Some people seem to think it does actually have an effect, but. James. It didn't even look like a professional football defense. <laughs> There's your clip right there. It didn't even resemble it. Like, it didn't. You're right. It didn't. Yeah. It didn't. Yeah. No. It didn't. <laughs> it didn't. It didn't. Oh. And, and, Ren, we're going to get in talking about not just the defense. The offense also did not look like a professional defense either, or offense. Um, but, James, 
thank you so much for jumping on with us and talking, bringing some of these stats, doing the work. Uh, why, don't you tell the peop- why don't you tell the people out there where they can find you and the great work that you're doing out there? Of course. So um, I run a YouTube channel called Mr. Bucks Nation. Um, all one word. All, all smushed together, you know. Um, on there, I do YouTube videos talking about the Buccaneers, much like what you guys do here on the Peter Cast. You can follow me on Twitter at Money James Hill. Yeah, as you do. Big <laughs> Money James Hill. James Hill, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, so you can follow me on Twitter. Uh, check out the YouTube channel. And um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the two main places you can find me. Um, this is... I've dubbed this week in particular Mike Smith Hate Week, so I still have a couple more videos uh, coming out on that and kind of further breaking that down and even taking an individual look at certain players like Noah Spence and a couple other mm-hmm. players as well, that figuring out those situations. So, yeah, that's where you can find me on Mr. Bucks Nation on YouTube and Money James Hill on Twitter. So thank you guys for having me on. I greatly appreciate it. It means a lot. Now it's time for us to kind of put to rest the Mike Smith thing for a while, Ren, and turn our attention really kind of towards the rest of the game through the instant cast. And so far, even in this episode, it seems like that's the only topic that we've really been covering, but there's a whole lot of other football to go through. So this is our final thoughts. Um, I'll put it out to you first, man. What other thoughts do you have about the game, about the team from this past week? And uh, we'll get through that and then get to our grades for the game as we close out the show tonight. Oh, God, I don't even care. It was just so bad. I mean, really, I mean, I mean, what what is there to talk about? I mean, the defense was the story. Mike Smith was the story. We're not going to talk about that anymore. I mean, overall, it was it was it was crappy, you know, it was mm-hmm. like, you know, uh, Fitzpatrick didn't look good with seeing ghosts throwing up his back feet, you know, dumb penalties. Ben Anok decided not to block people again. Uh, you know, Mike Evans had another drop. It's like, you know, like, I, what is there? Jameis got in, you know, they, they're putting their whole defensive backfield, like on the first down marker, <laughs> you know, it was like, all right, right. go ahead. Complete it for seven yards. You know, we're up, you know, 19 touchdowns go right ahead. You know, it was just like, Whatever it was, just you know, it was just. It's almost if we if the Bucks were like six and one and had this game, it's one of those games where like we're not even going to look at the film. Like, don't worry about it, forget it. We're moving on. Mm-hmm. Like, it's an it aberration. Was, yeah, it's one yeah. of those clunker games. But at two and two, where the defense have given up, you know, it's the first game where the offense couldn't bail them out. Almost bailed them out at Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Bailed them out the first two weeks. Offense couldn't bail him out, and it it was just God. It was just so ugly. So no. I don't so know. well, and and this is where I want to go to because I've not, I'm not settled on this yet, and it's concerning okay. to me. Is What's that? is after a couple of days of thinking about this, at the end, you know what I kind of say? Yeah, the defense sucked, and the defense was way worse than I ever thought they would be in this p- past particular game. But it doesn't – I can't say that I'm shocked or that it surprises me because this is what we've experienced for the last two years and change, two and a quarter seasons. Um, and, and I've said since game one, I don't trust this defense. I just I, – I haven't trusted them. A couple of days later, thinking about it, what concerns me far more about this game is what happened to the offense. And not oh just what's God. been happening to the offense in this particular game, Ren, but what happened to the offense against the Steelers? Because the offense didn't look amazing and shut down and and great against the Steelers. There was that great, you know, they looked amazing at uh, uh, New Orleans, and they did pretty damn good against the Eagles. So what's going on and, and what's happening right now with our offense where it's never getting going and I mean, even on the offensive line, getting going. What are you talking about? They scored almost every time they had the ball in the second half versus Pittsburgh. They they put up what ten points? No, they put up seven points in the in the and you know in the first two drives in the first quarter, and then they turned the ball over four times in the second. Like yeah. what? We're, what's so? 
I mean, they put up, they moved the ball and put up points in the Pittsburgh game. They had four turnovers in one quarter. They scored every other quarter besides that. Like, what are you talking about? Okay, so there's the Pittsburgh game, but then there's this okay. game. All right, so yeah, okay, so game. so the- oh, this game that that after you go out for two times and yeah, they didn't look good. They went three and out, then like six and out, then three and out. Next time they come out on the field, they're down twenty eight to nothing. What are you gonna like? Like, what are you? Uh, I, I don't. I I, okay. I just I, I'm shocked that you're talking about how that you're worried about the offense after one game, after one game where they didn't show up, where the defense couldn't stop a high school team. It, well, I mean, because I I sit back and I like I'm watching people like uh, Ali Marpet, who he had a couple of really good plays, but for the most part he had a really tough day. Caleb okay. Denanock was a swinging door. Demar Dotson couldn't stop anything on the edge. Demar Dotson he couldn't or, stop. Yeah, he couldn't stop the best defensive player in the league. Agreed. Sure, uh, Donovan Smith uh, over on the other side couldn't hold a block. Uh, long enough to save his life like the, it was a complete and entire breakdown sure. you're making it sound like there was 19 sacks in this game kind of felt like, it it. like i gotta tell you but uh, no but i mean uh, but these guys couldn't get anything going uh they got they went down the field a few times i mean they got inside look uh, under fitzpatrick the offense didn't look good, and I'm saying it's because of Fitzpatrick. He short hop balls to people. He overthrew mm-hmm. people. He was seeing ghosts. Now the running game didn't help, uh, but I don't think the running game was was as bad as. And it's it's been like this throughout the first uh, three games. The running back, the running game isn't as bad. I would say look at the, I, this is what I would say. Look at the running game in the first half of each of these four games, and then and then tell me the numbers and tell me if it's bad. You know, with, there's always been these extenuating circumstances. I'm not ready to jump on the running game now. Is it is it as good as I want it to be? No, but I don't think it's bad. Like, if they try to run the ball the outside against Peyton Barber, they're getting negative yards more than I would like. Mm-hmm. But if they, but if they spread the field out and they run it and they run it up the middle, then I, I think they're doing fine. And I think they're doing fine with. Uh, and I thought they did uh, uh, fine with it with uh, Ronald Jones as well. Like. Okay, you know, Marpet got beat a few times. Donovan Smith got beat a few times. Demir Dotson couldn't block the best defensive player in the league. We knew that going in. I mean, Cutter's like, oh, he's a very proud guy. You know, he's going to take it seriously. Okay, so would I. But does that mean I'm going to be able to block Khalil Mack? (laughs) Just because I take it seriously? And Benanok's been garbage since... He he's been he's been bad all year. Garbage might be a little strong word, but he's given up a sack I think in every single game. Is that true? I think so. That, you might be right about that. Yeah, well, ben, I mean Beninock certainly. Okay, so four games. Uh, you know, we do a we did a diagnosis after four quote unquote after four games. Although you could say thirty six on Mike Smith, but Beninock after four games. Uh, you know, do we need to toss Beninock and, and stick Evan Smith in there full time, or bring Alex Kappa in? Like, what what do we need to do with that position? I talked about that the Instacast a little bit. Like, I would not be surprised if next week, with these you know two weeks of practices, that uh, well, I guess it won't be two weeks. It's, of yeah, it's just one week of yeah, practice. Yeah, one week players practice. are off. Yeah, but with the time off that that they take a, seriously, take a look at, at, at switching out Beninock and Kappa. Uh, that might be like having to switch the rotation. Like Ben and roughly getting 75% of the snaps and Evan Smith's getting 25. Mm -hmm. Now they might have to flip that and have Evan Smith do 75 and Kappa 25 for a couple of weeks till they can trust him or they think he's get his feet wet and then flip it back the other way. Or Kappa just takes a starting job, but that's it's, it's to the point where Ben and play is, is bad enough to take a look at trying to upgrade that position with guys behind him. Okay. Um, and then I'll, to go back to the rest of the offense, right? So what we've seen in, in two games, really, uh, Chris Godwin has dropped a ball and fumbled. Uh, yeah. Mike Evans has dropped a, a, a big pass. Um, uh, I, I won't even count Ronald Jones just because, I mean, we could, we probably should, but this was his first game out. So, uh, you know, 
I mean, man, that ball was right in his hands. I mean, in his hands. Oh, my gosh. Anyway, um, although I got to say about Ronald Jones in his first di- time out, he did better than I thought he would do. I'll be real honest. Like, I didn't, I didn't think he was going to do and run as well as he did. Uh, I think this. I think he looked better in this game than he did through most of the preseason in the games that he I'm played. I'm thinking in the about preseason. this. He played. He went up against the best defensive line that we've played so far, yeah. and against, like you said, uh, the worst the offensive line has looked. Yeah. And this is really his first chance to get to run behind the number ones. Like it rarely, if at all, happened in the preseason. It's true. It's very so, true. You know, I'm I'm not really shocked by it. I was I was a little heartbroken that he dropped that ball. Yeah, just because it was his first one. Right. You know, it's just like, come on, man. Like, right. You know, just you know. It, so, and we're all rooting so, for him. Like, we all want. Yeah. We want him to be this thing. You know. But you know, on. if there, but because there's a fumble and a drop pass by Mike Evans, with really isn't an aberration. Mm-hmm. Uh, a drop pass by a guy who you know the storyline was, hey, he can't catch. I, I, I'm, I'm not seeing where, where the shocking part is. Like, you know, uh, they didn't throw a lot to OJ Howard. They threw a lot to Cam Brate. You know, he didn't drop any. Mm-hmm. Adam Humphreys, you know, hey, James is back in. Time to put Adam Humphreys and Cam Brate back in your fantasy lineups. Right. Uh, <laughs> and he did. I, I mean, he went right back to all his old ways, like, as soon as he was in, didn't he? It was more about the defenses they were running. Mm-hmm. It really was. It was. It was more about because Adam Humphreys was a short underneath hot route uh, on those plays. So that was, are you worried at all about the two interceptions? One, his hand got knocked when, when uh, Dotson couldn't, couldn't hold Khalil Mack. And I forget exactly what the other, the other one was probably just a bad pass. That one was a bad pass where a linebacker dropped back right into his throwing lane. Yeah. But the guy's like six, eight, you know, mm-hmm. two eighty five. So how could you not see? Actually, a defensive end did it, but it's a three four defense. But you know how that works. Uh, yeah, it was a bad pass. So you know, if you're pro Jameis, you can. Oh, he's rusty. hasn't seen you know hasn't seen a three four defense in God knows how long. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, hadn't played his first regular football, all that kind of stuff. And if you're anti Jameis, you're like, oh well, there it is, a dumb turnover. Mm-hmm. Either way, it, it was a bad turnover pass. Sure. The one. The one on Khalil Mack, you know, that's you know, you got you blame Dotson more than you blame Jameis on that one. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, I'm I'm still not sure. Like, I, just, I I'm just not following you. How you're more worried? Just because defense is so terrible, but you expected it. Hey, all right, here's and, and the offense doesn't put up thirty points, and all of a sudden now you're worried about the offense. Hey, well, just, it's I, it's not even that they didn't put up thirty points. The the bottom line of it being, they scored three points in the first half. Three. They never had the ball, Brent. They didn't. I mean, the whole. Well, <laughs> they got down inside, you know, like the ten yard line. Didn't punch it in. Kicked a field goal. Got down there again. Fitzpatrick threw an interception. All the other times it was like three and outs or six and outs, drop passes, holding penalties, sacks by Benanok, holding penalty by Benanok. You know, it was it was yeah, they were playing a really good defense. So they had their opportunities. I mean, by by what you're saying, but they're playing a really good defense. I mean, they can't put up thirty against everybody. So what? They put up three points the first half. Who cares? That doesn't that doesn't. So what? Yeah, I I mean, I just watched the Monday Night Football game. What was it? Uh, 17 10 at halftime the Chiefs are 4-0 I, it, it, I mean all right it's it's like you've been spoiled after three games like oh what oh we don't have 21 points by halftime the, What's I'm wrong telling with the you, offense I, Ren I 100% expect from here on out every single game that this offense goes out in the very first play Deshaun Jackson runs for 64 yards for a touchdown if that doesn't I happen agree. the whole damn thing is is lost that's exactly, you know what? That's exactly how you sound to me. That's, I know you're being funny and ridiculous, but that's how you sound to me. Fair enough. So you you don't, you're not, my point being, you're not so worried about the performance that the offense put. I mean, the, the offense was atrocious. After a game where the defense gave up 35 points in the first half, you want me to be worried about the offense? That's what you're asking me. That's what I'm asking you. The answer's no. Okay. All right. Well, with that, I feel like I'm having an argument with Passenger. <laughs> He's been something lately. Anyway, uh, hi, Tom. Uh, he doesn't listen to the show. All right. Does he? I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> moving on. Uh, let's hear it. We talked about it. All right. Yeah, so that's uh, that's everything I have as far as final thoughts. Um, I've, I am 
I will say this going forward, um, especially now with Jameis being back, you know, this is now the complete offense that we, you know, we should have been running this whole time. What is, mm-hmm. what is the identity of this offense going to be? Because in the first couple of games under Fitzpatrick, they really did establish themselves as this big vertical, uh, you know, high powered, tons of yards, put up tons of points, kind of an offense. Um, mm-hmm. I'm interested to see where that goes from here on out. I don't know that it will be exactly the same. My guess has been, and I don't know if I've ever actually said it on this show, my guess has been that I think the offense will wind up averaging about 28 points, 27 points a game. Um, so it's not going to be 48. That is, that's a little ridiculous to expect. Um, I don't even think it's necessarily going to be – averaging, which means some will be higher, some will be lower. I think we'll probably see about 27 points. Um, you know, and if this defense can hold people to 24, that's going to be good, <laughs> but yikes. So anyway, that's what I'm so looking for to hold somebody to 24 points. Yes, it was. This yes, was, it was. Week. So that's yeah. what I'm looking for. And, and when I'm expecting about 27 points and I only see 10, yeah, I'm a little worried, but as you say, it, you know, it's best defense in the league. Like the I didn't boss. think they were going to be that that good, though. I got to be honest with you. I did not think – I knew their defense was going to be something. I knew the line was going to be something. I didn't think it was going to be like that. Well, the score also dictated – It you know, it, it takes away basically the run game, and mm-hmm. they only really have to play you – know, like I said, they only – like everyone can sure. play like seven, eight yards off the ball, and if they catch it, who cares? And then – if a guy starts to settle in, you can break on the ball and try to make a play on it because if he catches it, who cares? You know, it, and then when you get the ball back, you're, the defense can't stop you anyway, so you're going to go put more points up anyway. So yeah, it, it, it's yeah, yeah. Judging the offense off the, the Bears game is, is is just unfair, especially after what they did the first three weeks. All right, but here, but this twenty seven point thing, I'm telling you, this is what's what I think is going to happen at the Atlanta game. Remember. When we didn't have any starting running backs, and we went in Carolina Monday night, and they ran the ball with Chakuz Rogers like 32 times. Yeah. I think that's what we're going to see against Atlanta. They're going to try to keep the ball away from Atlanta because they can't stop them. So we're going to see a heavy dose of, okay. of uh, Rojo and Barber. And, and this is what I'm afraid of. I think that's going to be the scheme going in. Mm-hmm. And since we don't see this, you know, this, this deep ball after deep ball, you know, uh, like a twelve yard reception when Fitzpatrick was quarterback was like was like the short short one. Yeah, right you right know, it was like seventeen yards twenty two yards fifty yards but a lot of them were like fifteen sixteen yards because I did the stats like you know mm-hmm. if it's over fifteen yards you get a point for that so uh, you know rarely were there like seven yard receptions right. unless it was like you know second and four they they do a seven yard reception but it's a first down and. So, but I'm afraid that we're not going to, fans aren't going to see this high flying offense versus Atlanta. And if we play the game and, you know, if it tends up to be like 24 21, win or lose, here comes the people about Jameis can't run the offense as good as Fitzpatrick. Uh, Jameis is playing favorites. That's what I'm really looking for is if he's, if Deshaun Jackson disappears again. Yeah. You know, that's kind of what I'm looking for. Uh, he, he, yes, he hit a lot of deep balls. Fitzpatrick hit a lot of deep balls to Jackson, but he also kept him involved in the game with other passes. Uh, and that's what I'm looking for. You know, Humph was uh, the invisible man the first three, and, you know, three and a half mm-hmm. games, three games in that, in that other half, that half. So if he starts getting all these catches and if Brayt might have to because of injury uh, being in there, um, you know, I'm not sure how I'm going to feel about that. I, I, I'm i going to have to see if, like, I'm going to start watching all 22 and if mm-hmm. guys are open, like, deeper down the field or other places and Jameis is, like, forcing the ball into Cam because he trusts him and, you know, Cam doesn't get any extra yardage because he has to jump in the air over the linebacker and the safety comes and blows him up in the back. I mean, how many times do I have to see, like, Cameron Brait get freaking speared? He doesn't get speared, but get, like, hit mm-hmm. in the kidneys. Like, yeah. I feel I've been watching it for, like, eight years. Like camera break going up high, getting speared in the kidneys. Like, mm-hmm. uh, you know, that's, that's, that's like we'll the bread and butter blood. play. Yeah. yeah. It's like, you know, so that's my biggest worry right now is that the Bucks go into Atlanta and try to control the clock. Like try not, not necessarily not try not to have big plays, 
but don't go for them as much. Uh, run the ball a lot more to keep the ball away from Atlanta. Try to shorten the game, give them as, as, as few as possessions as possible. And then no matter win, lose, or draw, it doesn't matter because – this offense looks totally different under Jameis, and I liked it better when I saw under Fitzpatrick. And it's not going to be his fault. It's the defense's fault. Yeah. And it, it, it was certainly – the first couple of weeks under Fitzpatrick certainly were entertaining. Well, Ren, why don't we go ahead and get to our grades? How do you grade out the team, offense, defense, special teams, and then the team as a whole? Oh, uh, defense. Well, A+. plus. Yeah. <laughs> It, it could, on it opposite day, <laughs> yeah, opposite day, oppo day. <laughs> uh, yeah, it couldn't have got any worse. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's like think of three players that you could put. Like uh, you know, Peter Perry does their most impressive list. Uh-huh. Right. Just try to think of three players to put on for defense for most JPP. impressive. JPP. JPP. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, exactly. Like, who are the other two? Yeah. Uh, You'd have to like really look deep, and Vinny Curry had a pretty good game, uh, but you know, but and then after that, it has to be Levante David, and that that's it. Like, mm-hmm. and and Levante David didn't have a spectacular. He had seven tackles, but you know, okay, the guy it was it was, yeah. it was second and seven. You tackle him eleven yards down the field, whoopee, right? <laughs> Yay, you got to right. tackle. So um, defense, I'm gonna make this short because I feel like this is a long show. Defense F. Offense D, special teams uh, A, I guess. Can't really. No one returned anything. Made all their kicks. Didn't do anything special. So I guess I'll give him a B. Okay. There wasn't any long field goals. Uh, they did pin him inside the 10, but not enough to <laughs> to, mm-hmm. to stop that mighty bear O. Right. Um, so I'm going to give him a B. And overall, it's it's uh, it's – Overall, I'm giving the, the team an F. Like, yeah. You know, the offense is getting a, a D because they just weren't as bad as the defense. You know, like you're right; they only gave up ten points. <laughs> right. But I can't give them both an F because right. they both like if you know unless like we're I give them an F and the defense gets like an F like twelve percent mm-hmm. and the def and the offense gets an F like at fifty four percent. An F plus but, versus an F minus. <laughs> Yeah, but, right. but like like super F minus, as right. in like your your grade. You did so bad, your grade is over for the semester. Like mm-hmm. you can't you can't bring it up to anything. It's like you got like a six out of a right. hundred. Just drop the class. Oh, we're done. Yeah, just yeah. we're done. Sorry, should have studied. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so I'm gonna you know, but overall, yeah, I got it's it's got to be an F. Like even the special teams that that was just such a bad display. Mm-hmm. It was just so bad. I mean, they just didn't even look prepared. I mean, that's yeah. the saddest part about it. Like, they didn't look like an NFL football team out there. Mm-hmm. They looked lost. lost. They had no yeah. idea what they're doing. Like, they just met each other five minutes before the game. Yeah. Hey, Carlton, that's Brent. Yeah, Brent, he's going to play opposite side of you and just wave him across the field. Oh, hey, what's up, man? And then, oh, wait. Oh, you're here? Wait, oh, here. I should be there? I sh- <laughs> wait, are you covering or me? What's going on? Yeah. Well, he told me to do this. Well, that's not, I mean, I've been, I've been in this defense three for three years now, and this is what I do. So maybe you should do that. I don't know, man. This, I mean, I was at practice, and this is what they told me to do. So, yeah, it's an F. It's just garbage mm-hmm. overall. Overall, G, garbage. There you go. Um, I, for me, it's it's pretty simple across the board. It's Fs all the way. This this game was that bad. It's probably it unfair. What is up with you? You're that, getting there. Sorry. It's probably unfair to do that to the special teams because I think you're right. You know, Catanzaro did make his kicks, the two that he went out there for. Brian Anger did okay with his punts. I, I, there was no big returns. Nobody got, um, you know, we we didn't have a big return, but we didn't allow a big return. So I, I think in my true grading system, I'd probably give them a C. Like, they did what I expect them to do. Nothing flashy, but they didn't kill anything either. So, uh, so probably they really would be a C, but offense defense was so horrendous. It's an F and, and that just the team as a whole, that is just a full on F, um, across the board. Cause as you said, they, they just didn't, they didn't look like they knew what they were doing. So, um, well, red do what? It was embarrassing. It was very embarrassing. Well, let's put this, uh, let's put this, this game let's put all this stuff to bed and why don't you tell the people out there where they can find you on the internet 
Best way to find me on the internet is on Twitter at Rendax is my handle, R E N underscore D A X T. I'm always down to talk Buccaneers football. And once again, if I have put in your DM that says envelope stuffed, that means your flag will be going out tomorrow, which will be Thursday, October 5th. And if you'd like to get in touch with me, I am at Brent Allen Live across all the social medias. And you can find the show at The Pewtercast on Twitter, or you can find us at Facebook.com forward slash The Pewtercast, or shoot us an email to The Pewtercast at gmail.com. Also, if you'd like to get involved with the show, support the show a little bit, you can find us at Patreon.com forward slash The Pewtercast. The more you give, the more kickbacks you get. And, uh, uh, we definitely appreciate it. You look cool and support the show all at the same time. Well, guys, until next time, we'll come out with the second half of this show where we'll get to some of your final thoughts. And uh, we got a new iTunes review, a couple emails, and we got a voicemail, Ren, which will be very cool to listen to for the very what? first time. So uh, we'll catch up with that on the second half of our final thoughts show coming out later this week. But until then, guys, even on the backside of this embarrassment, as always, go Bucks. <laughs>